All right, so again, what I want to do starting off is going through and looking at some of the citation formats. So the first one are looking at basic journal articles. Now, in all honesty, if this is one that you don't have down pat to this stage, we're probably going to run into a little bit of trouble. I will point out a couple of things that I note as common mistakes. Um, first one, when you're looking at the initials, the initials always have a space in between them. Uh, that's actually new from the sixth edition of APA. So the fifth edition actually has it like M period K period with no space in it. So if you have multiple initials for the author, there's always a space in between the two initials. The title, the only capitals that you find in a title come immediately after punctuation marks. Right, so you see the F comes right after the period, so it gets capitalized. The T comes right after the semicolon, or yeah, semicolon, so it gets capitalized. Everything else, unless it is a proper title, and by proper title I mean things that would be capitalized in the text. So this fancy name that they've picked for their particular program, you know, or their particular instrument, an evaluation of the whatever, whatever instrument, whatever, whatever instrument isn't capitalized. That's something that they created. Whereas like a proper name or New York or basically things that you're not allowed to use in Scrabble, those kinds of things get capitalized. Um, everything else is lowercase, plain and simple. In regular font, the title of the journal is what we would call proper cased, meaning that you know those prepositions that you see like the, of, a tend to be lowercase, everything else is uppercase. It's in italics as well as the volume number. So the title, the journal, comma, and the volume number are all in italics. There's no space between the volume number and the issue number. The parentheses and the issue number are in regular font, comma, and then the inclusive page reference. And by inclusive, I mean first page dash last page. So to use this one as an example, Newfoundland and Labrador is the official name of a province. You know, it'd be like saying New Mexico. Right? So that's why Newfoundland and Labrador are capitalized, whereas the rest of it isn't. So that's a good example of a proper name that's inside of the um, actual item. When you're looking at an online journal article, there is only one difference between the two. It's this section here at the bottom, and it just sort of looks this way because it's kind of long the way uh, Word cuts it up. But essentially, it immediately follows this. So you do period, space, retrieved from, and then give me the URL for the specific article. So oftentimes, it'll either be .htm or .pdf, because that's you know going to the exact location of the article. Sometimes, online journals will have page numbers. Sometimes, they won't. In this case, this particular one doesn't. So every single article is just paginated on its own. So when you go into this one, it's page one through however long the article is. But if you were to click the very next article in the same issue, it's also page one through wherever, whatever, you know, one to say 27, one to 29. Because of that, it's no use to put down the page number here because every single one of them is going to start at one and end at whenever. So it just gets left as blank. Some journals will actually assign a page number to it. I know, for example, the Journal of Distance Education or the International Review of Research in Open and Distance Learning. The first article is going to, in any issue, is going to be like page 1 to 33. The second article is actually going to be page 34 through 72. In that case, because they actually give an individual page number for each article, the only difference is I'm going to put a comma after my issue number here, so it'll be, you know, close parentheses, comma, 34-72 period retrieved from and then the URL. So essentially it would look exactly like the first one we saw except for after 1058 period there'd be space retrieved from and then given the URL. Now you only do this for online journals. So if you went into our SHU database and you know SHU library site and you got an article from the database and you were able to download the full text PDF from there, that's not an online journal. That's a print journal that we just happen to subscribe to their online collection of. 
So you don't use this. You use the first one for that. It also means that you don't put any retrieved by or any date or anything like that there. Now, one exception to this, some journals will require, and when you look at APA 6.1, they basically say that you can or you don't have to, it's entirely up to you, um, include the DOI number. So every single article that's out there will have, um, if it's in the social sciences, will have a DOI number. It actually usually will be a DOI in lowercase colon, and then it'll be an alphanumeric thing, and it's often 12 to 14 characters long. In some cases, specific places where you will submit, immediately following this actual citation, they would want DOI colon and whatever the DOI number is. If it's a science or medicine journal, it's actually PMID is the, the code they use. But essentially, every single article has a unique identifier out there. And that unique identifier is either the PMID or the DOI number. APA 6.1 says that you can include that in your citation, but you do not have to. Either way, you have to be consistent. So if you include it for one in your references, include it for all of them. If you don't include it for all of them, include it in none of them. As a researcher myself, the only time I include them is basically when a journal requires me to. So my citations for, will look like this one here. It won't have that DOI at the end of it unless they specifically ask me to do it. Um, so the next one is a book or a report. So when we're looking at how to structure these, it's if you sort of know the formatting of what you're... All the APA ones will follow roughly the same style. So if you remember with journal articles or in the same works for magazines or newspapers or what have you, you know, the title of the publication was in italics. When it comes to a book, it's the same thing. The title of the publication is in italics. If you remember, the main title that we put in the journal article citation used capitals only after a punctuation point. The same thing here. Capitals only after a punctuation point. The biggest difference between these is in the case of a book or a report, you're going to include the city, comma, and then the state abbreviation for that particular citation, colon, and then the publisher. There are three exceptions to this. New York doesn't go New York, New NY. For whatever reason, it is just New York, as you can see on the example here. London is the, actually I said three exceptions, there's actually only two. London is the other one, as in London in the United Kingdom. For whatever reason, when you look at APA formatting, New York and London, you do not have to include any additional information. So if this was published, say, by, um, um, oh, who is it down in, in Maha, New Jersey? It's not Sage, they're in Thousand Oaks, California. I want to say Pearson publishes a lot of the books out of there. Or maybe it's Allen and Bacon. Anyway, there's a major publisher down in, in, in Ma, and I'm probably saying this wrong, Mawa, New Jersey, M-A-H-W-A-H. Um, you know, so that one I would say, Mawa, comma, N-J, colon, and then whatever that publisher was. I think it's Allen and Bacon or Pearson. I can't remember which of the two is down there. Um, so Sage, which publishes a lot of... Um, of qualitative research books, including the Fink book that we've got for this class. That's all published in Thousand Oaks, California. Um, I say that now, I should double check just to make sure since I got it in my hand. Yep, Thousand Oaks, California, 2455 Teller Road. Um, you know, so that would be Thousand Oaks, comma, CA, colon, Sage Publications, period. Right, so when I look at place of publication, and um, <coughs> publisher. And again, so the only two exceptions to putting in the state abbreviation or the country name is New York and London in England. Um, all the other ones, so when you're looking at, say, a foreign place, if there isn't a well-known two-letter abbreviation, so basically if you are looking at something outside of Canada or the United States, you actually put in 
the country. So you would say Paris, comma, France, and then colon, publisher. For Canadian provinces, because they follow a similar two-letter abbreviation code, like the U.S., you would put in the two-letter abbreviation code. So Allen & Bacon in Canada is published out of Toronto, comma, O-N, you know, which is the abbreviation for Ontario. If you don't know the abbreviation for a particular state or a particular province, if you just Google state abbreviations or provincial abbreviations, what they actually use is they use the ones that are approved by the U.S. Post Office or Canada Post. Um, so if you can't find it that way, always just you know, go to U.S. Post state abbreviations and it'll tell you there. Uh, Canada Post provincial abbreviations, it'll give you the ones there. Um, and that's the same for reports as well. So remember we were talking at the bottom of that list of trustworthiness in terms of evaluating source. If something was published by, say, you know, the Center for Public Education, you know, wherever they're located, say it's Washington, D.C., you would say Washington, comma, D.C., no uh, periods in it, colon, Center for Public Education. Here's actually an example of a, um, a report. This is a report that was done by Syracuse University. So you can see Syracuse, comma, NY, colon, Syracuse University. Project Advance is actually a trademarked, um, a trademarked, uh, I don't know, it's an intervention is what it's actually, it is. But it's, you know, a trademarked commercial product that gets sold, so you'll note product, project, advance are both capitalized. English, because the word English is always capitalized, um, is in capitalization, but you note freshman is, you know, in lower case. Now, if project advance wasn't a trademarked item, if it was just something that the folks at Syracuse University came up with, the A would be in lower case there because it's not a trademarked or a labeled item. Right, so that's one of the things to note on that one. And I specifically chose this citation for this example so I could, you know, sort of walk you through what gets capitalized and what doesn't in terms of, you know, titles. The same kind of thing happens when you're looking at an online book or an online report. So this is an example of an online report. And it follows the, pretty much the exact same pattern we saw with the journals. This part up here, these first three lines, it's the exact same thing as if it was a print report. Right? You notice even though Florida High School is the proper name for that particular school, because it's not a trademark thing, the only thing that's capitalized there is the state of Florida. High school goes into lower case. Um, you know, and there's no other punctuation in there, so you'll note that other than the proper name and the, everything else is in lower case there. The only thing that's been added is retrieved from and then this long URL, which is where you could actually go and find the report. You know, with the same kind of thing, Tallahassee, comma, FL, colon, Florida State University, because these two guys were essentially academics at Florida State, and they were the ones who were responsible for doing this evaluation. Book chapters. So in the case of books like the ones you know we've got for this class, where essentially there's one author that writes the entire book. Even if you're only using stuff from chapter three, you would still cite it as a book. The only time you would cite a book chapter is if it is an edited book. And essentially what that means is you've got you know two editors that are responsible. I was looking to see if I brought a copy of one that would qualify, but I don't have one in the ones I've got here. Um, <clears throat> you know, you've got one or more editors that are responsible for bringing together the book. They may be responsible, or he or she may be responsible for writing an introductory chapter, writing a concluding chapter. They may even contribute a chapter throughout, but there are multiple authors when you look at the overall book. So chapter one might be written by one guy, chapter two might be written by, you know, the, these two female authors. Chapter 3 might have six authors, you know, from outside the country, that kind of thing. And in that case, when you're looking at it, you know, here's an example. It's a book that was written by Berg and Clark. I can tell that because they're the editors, EDS. If there's only one person, remove the S. So it would just be ED, period, if there's only one editor. 
the authors of the particular chapter are the ones that start this. Right, so in this case, I'm looking at a specific chapter. If I remember correctly, it's like chapter, I think it's chapter 7 in the book, but you know, not that I've got it there. Um, so I've got the chapter authors, the date of publication, the title of the specific chapter. Then I say it's in, and you'll note when I get to the editor's names, their initials come before their surname as opposed to the other way around, which is what happens when you're looking at the, um, the, the chapter authors, and it's different than when the book author, when we looked at the previous one, or report author, it's different than the journal author. You know, so when you start it, it's always surname, comma, initial. But when you're looking at a book chapter, when you get to that in, it always goes the opposite way. So you go the initials and then the person's surname. You indicate that they're an editor or editors, that's in parentheses, a comma. The title of the book itself is what gets italicized. Then in parentheses after that, but before the period, the page numbers for whoops, the page numbers for that particular chapter. Right? So this chapter written by Baker et al. Appears on page 130, starts on 133 and ends on page 142. Then it goes and follows the regular book format. New York, because it's New York, we don't put a state abbreviation in there. Teachers College Press, period. So place of publication and then publish it. Theses and dissertations. When we're looking at theses and dissertations, we have the student's name up here. You know, so we're following, again, a roughly the same pattern. It actually looks very much starting off like a book. Date, we see the title in italics, which you know, is consistent with a book or report. The thing is, is all theses and dissertations are considered unpublished works. Even though they're in the ProQuest database, they are considered unpublished works. So you specifically say, Unpublished dissertation or unpublished thesis, if it's a master's thesis, both of which are capitalized, comma, and then the institution from which that dissertation came or that thesis came. So in this case, it's the University of Nevada at Las Vegas, comma, and then the location of that institution. Now, in the case of the example here, it's sort of self-explanatory. You know, University of Nevada at Las Vegas is obviously going to be located in Las Vegas, Nevada, or Nevada. But it's not always that simple. I mean, we'll use Sacred Heart as a good example. You know, all the dissertations that our nursing and our PT and our business admin students are doing, you know, they would say Sacred Heart University, comma, Fairfield, Connecticut, because that's where the university is based at. The other one that you may see are conference papers and presentations. As I mentioned earlier today, oftentimes the only time you will see papers or presentations is through Google Scholar or if you actually go to the specific researcher's website, they might post those. You know, I'll use myself as an example. Every single conference presentation I've ever delivered, the slides for all like 200 out of them, are sitting up on SlideShare. And if you go to my website, it actually links into the slides for every single presentation I've ever given. And you're seeing a lot more academics do that kind of thing. In the university databases that we're looking at, you likely won't find any of these in there. You know, so if you're relying primarily upon the university database, either their print collections and for books purposes, and the journal databases that we have access to for peer-reviewed articles, this is probably not going to apply to you. But if you're using Google Scholar, you might hit on a couple of these. If because you've noticed that you've, you know, of the 25, 30 articles you found, that, you know, six of them are by the same person, so you've gone out and tried to find it. Okay, let me find that person online, see what else they've got on their profile. You might find some of these there. Author, date, and title are the exact same as the last couple we've looked at. You know, so the authors of or in this case, the presenters are all listed here. The date, 
you'll notice that when it comes to conference paper or proceedings, they don't just have the year there, but they've got the inclusive dates of the conference. Right, so it's 2006, comma, November 5th to 7th. Right? You would find the same thing when you're looking at, a, say, a newspaper article or a magazine article. It follows the exact same format as a journal article, with this exception. So if you were to do something from the, say, Hartford Current today or the New York Times today, you would use the same format as you would for journal article, with the exception that you would say, 2015, March 22nd. Actually, just March 22, you would put the ND in. So March 22. So that's the only difference between, say, a newspaper or magazine article and the journal article one. The journal article doesn't have this additional date information, but a newspaper or magazine article would. It finishes in regular font with a paper presentation at and in this case, you see, and this is actually the, the best way of doing it. It's not the only way of doing it. Um, you would always say what it is. So it might be like a professional development presentation. You know, so if you were, you guys had, say, a PD thing last week, and the presenter gave you, you know, a handout of their slides, kind of like what I've done here today. That's something you can cite. You know, that is considered a piece of literature. You could say a professional development presentation, because that's what that is. In this case, it's actually, this one here was a paper presentation. It might be a round table. It might be a panel presentation, right? So that second word there is going to be a descriptor of essentially what type of presentation it was. And then they will give either just the name of the conference or the name of the organization and the conference. Now, in many cases, that's one and the same. For example, next month I am go going to the annual conference for the American Educational Research Association, AERA, the guys that publish this journal, as well as six others. Um, you know, so the presentation that I'm giving there, it'll be a paper presentation at the annual conference for the American Educational Research Association. They don't have a separate name for it. In this case, you'll know they actually do have a separate name. So the organization is the North American Council for Online Learning, and they actually call their conference something. They call it the Virtual School Symposium. You could write this and say, at the virtual school symposium, and it would be just as correct. Providing this additional level of detail, it helps your reader know where this is coming from. So if you know anything about the North American Council for Online Learning, it gives you some more contextual clues, so it allows the reader to be able to judge your literature a little bit more. Comma, and then the location of the conference. So this particular conference was held in Plano, Texas. Right, so what we're looking at here, you know, again, the first three things are pretty much the same, minus it actually gives the conference dates. The difference is this statement at the end, so the bottom three lines essentially. And again, it's A, insert type of presentation here, at whatever the conference was, and then where the conference was located. I think this is the last one I've got in here. Um, conference proceedings. Not all conferences, but more and more conferences will actually publish a booklet at the end of the conference itself that essentially has copies of all of the papers that were accepted. You know, because when I go to, say, this conference, which is the annual conference for the Society of Information Teaching Technology, or Information Technology and Teacher Education, while I will submit an eight-page paper as my proposal, that I can then, you know, unblind and it becomes part of the proceedings. I'm not going to get up there and read an eight-page paper when I do my presentation. I'm going to have that sort of condensed down into a PowerPoint thing that I'm going to get up and do, you know, a nice little song and dance here about it. By, you know, attending my session at the conference, you're going to get essentially what I consider the highlights from those eight pages. If you want to see all eight pages and, for that matter, be able to track down some of the citations, and some of the specifics that I talked about, you would go and look for the conference proceedings. Not all conferences have them. Typically speaking, they tend to be larger organizations, national or international conferences have a chance at having a proceedings. The rest don't. If you look at it in terms of how it's formatted, it looks exactly like a book, or sorry, a book chapter. 
Um, you know, so you've got the proceedings title, or the proceedings uh, author, sorry, the date it was published, the specific title of the, essentially the proceeding, um, you know, in the same kind of format that we expect, so capitals after each piece of punctuation. It says in, and then has the editors for that particular thing, and actually I've just noticed that one of the errors, that E there should be capitalized in editors. Um, so you'll know, essentially what I've been doing here is I've actually been pulling out chunks of things from things I've published. So when I published this, um, not necessarily when I published this proceedings, but when I published an article that cited this proceedings and I pulled this out of my reference list, some journal editor didn't catch that. Essentially, I made a mistake and the journal editor didn't catch it. Um, you know, it gives the title of the particular book that it's in. In this case, it's a proceedings book. You'll notice that only proper names are capitalized. So proceedings to start it off is, and then the full name of the organization, because it's a proper name, is capitalized, but everything else is in lowercase. Then I have my page references in parentheses, the same way the chapter did. The location of publication, so in this case it's Norfolk, Virginia. And then the publisher, which is this particular organization, AAC. Oh, I did put in a newspaper article. I thought I did, but I wasn't 100% sure, so that's why I mentioned it earlier with the journal articles. Um, so newspaper articles, and I say newspaper, it could be magazine articles are the same thing. Um, most magazines are published monthly or quarterly, so instead of having a specific date, like a newspaper would because they're daily or at least published on a day, say if this was Time magazine, it might just be the August issue, right? So you just have 2007 comma August, because that's what the issue name is for it. Um, or it might have fall. There are a lot of a lot of magazines in particular published quarterly, so you might have like a, a winter, spring, summer, fall issues. Some that publish bi-monthly might have like a January slash February edition, and then a March slash April edition. So in that case, it would be 2007 comma January slash February. You know, if it was the, the first one of that year, right? But essentially, what that chronological reference refers to there is essentially the date of publication or the date of the issue, right? So in the case of a newspaper, uh, in this case like the Globe and Mail, which essentially is our version of the New York Times, um, you know, it's a daily, so you've got a specific date there. Everything else looks just like a journal article. In this case, you can see I wasn't in Toronto at the time, you know, it was published, so instead of actually getting the print copy, I got it from the online version. The online version doesn't have a page number. Now, if I happen to be in Toronto on August 29th, 2007, I say Toronto because that's where it's published from. It gets sent to it all across the country. Um, depending on where you live, it might take three days to get to you. So you can read the news three days old. Um, if I did get it from the print edition, I would have here, after Globe and Mail, I would have had a comma. The comma would have been on italics. And then I would have had, like, page A7 and A10. You know, if it was in, say, the first section page out on pages A7 and A10. Because oftentimes in a newspaper, they won't have, the article won't be on just one page. And often it's not finished on the very next page. You know, they'll give you a teaser on one page, and then, like, ten pages later or five pages later, they give you the rest of it. You use an and symbol there instead of a dash. So it would be A7 space and space A10. And when I say and, I mean the and symbol, not the word and. 